Tomorrow will mark exactly one month since FBI agents searched Mar-a-Lago. And after 30 days, the former president still has yet to explain why he had classified documents at his home and club in Florida. Those documents reportedly included the highly classified details of a foreign government's nuclear capabilities. Well, just a few days ago, a judge ruled in favor of a special master to oversee the DOJ investigation, a move that has many mystified. We welcome Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett of the U.S. Virgin Islands to discuss. She served as an impeachment manager in Trump's second impeachment. Congresswoman, always good to see you. I want to start with the special master ruling. What does does this make sense to you? Um, most people in the legal profession are kind of shaking their head at this one. It doesn't really, uh, many of her arguments, she contradicts herself. The evidence doesn't support parts of her ruling. It's really a very convoluted opinion uh, to get her to a place that it appears she wanted to get to in the end anyway. And so, you know, the Justice Department right now has to make a determination what they're going to do about this ruling. So let's say it holds. Let's say there's going to be a special master. It doesn't mean this thing flies out the window. They're just an independent third party. And if there's wrongdoing, if Trump did something bad, it doesn't mean uh, that they're not going to go after him. That's correct. It, it's a delay uh, on the part of the criminal investigation. But let's not forget that there's still a separate investigation going on, which is related to national security interests and a risk assessment as to whether or not these documents pose a risk to national security, to classify classifications that um, different agencies have, to intel and to potentially even agents that are out in the field. That's still going on. As an impeachment manager, you witnessed Trump yet again avoiding consequences. Now that you're watching all of this play out with the Department of Justice, how confident are you that he will face some sort of consequences? Well, I think we're seeing a confluence of so many different cases going on with the former president right now. Trump has what's happened in Mar-a-Lago, seizing uh, records. And let's not forget, it's not just classified records. It's all of the documents. None of these belong to him. Under the Presidential um, you know, Records Act, all of this information belongs to the White House, belongs to the National Archives, not to him. So there's it related issues to that. We also have the New York civil case going on, um, in which we are seeing movement, as well as the Georgia case related, which is a criminal matter as well, related to uh, the election and election fraud. So I think that this confluence is going to come to bear, and eventually we're going to squeeze some conviction out of this president. I want to switch gears because you and I actually spoke five years ago, almost exactly when Hurricane Irma devastated the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico, it was five years ago yesterday. Can you give us an update on what happened since then? Oftentimes when we see devastation in vulnerable places like the Virgin Islands, we say, oh, when they rebuild, we'll make the infrastructure stronger and better so it won't get damaged like this again. But it doesn't often happen that way. Well, I think that's right. And I think, you know, we were so grateful to have you and your team, so many people who came down to really take an assessment. And one of the amazing things that Congress did after the storm, after looking at some of the places that you went to, that others went to, was saying, you know, the argument that you, Stacy, and others have been making is correct. We have not given you the funding before the storm that it would have made you more resilient. And so uh, under the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018, we received an exponential, both ourselves and Puerto Rico, received an exponential amount of money to rebuild. Unfortunately, during the years during the Trump administration, they were really, uh, you know, it was a, a terrible fight to release any of that funding. And we still today have capacity issues to meet the obligations for that. I'm hopeful that you're going to see in the next couple of years tremendous rebuilding. Um, we have seen Congress making an effort, and this administration, uh, the, uh, age, uh, the different agencies are really working hard to get that money obligated so that the people, the great people that you met, who, against all odds, continue to band together, to be a community, to support one another, you know, making trips to different parts of the islands that 
uh, regular military and others couldn't get to, we supported each other. And we're going to continue to fight and support so that our children's children can have a legacy after the storm from the tremendous opportunities that we think that we have. So five years out, where are the islands today as far as recovering, rebuilding? Well, I think you're seeing right now, um, you know, we have had some obligation for major projects such as rebuilding our schools. Both of our major hospitals were destroyed. Getting agreement on the rebuild of the hospital. We've been using, um, you know, temporary shelters for our children who are, have been not only dealing with hurricanes five years ago, but COVID that have kept them out of schools. We're seeing, you know, tremendous issues with them both socially and academically. And I just have to give kudos to the teachers and to the parents and to the kids who have done a tremendous job during that time. We're seeing road projects being rebuilt. We're supposed to rebuild our entire utility system. Virgin Islanders were out of power for some up to six months. Um, and unfortunately, so much of that has not taken places yet. But as you know, you know, after Katrina, 10 years later, some of those projects are still in the works. We're hoping that we're not going to be that case, uh, that we are going to be able to jumpstart this and to really see some tremendous growth. I, unfortunately, many of us don't feel that it's gone as quickly as we like, um, but I think the pressure is on. Our governor and others really want to get this done, and we're going to see it happen. All right. Always good to see you, Representative Stacey Plaskett. You know, Stacey we need Plaskett. to come down, Stephanie, and see it again. Hey, Take a look. any, us, excuse, any excuse to go down to the Virgin Islands, I will not turn down the opportunity. Always Thank good you. to see you, Representative Stacey Plaskett.